educational level faculty development program on the art of teaching. Let me introduce the resource person of today's session, Ms. Leelawati. She is currently working as assistant professor, Department of Business and Management Studies, Sheshatri Lai Gudla Valero Engineering College, Gudla Valero, Andhra Pradesh. Her qualifications include bachelor's degree in science from Nagarjuna University, master of business administration from Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, and she's qualified for lectureship in the subject management. She has published a lot of research papers in national and international journals, and she has attended many workshops, conferences, and faculty development programs. She has published three book chapters. She is also a lifetime member in Association of Indian Management Schools and a member in Indian Academic Research Association. With this, I hand over the session to Professor Ms. Leelawati. Ma'am, please. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was a sweet introduction. Thank Good you, morning, everyone. Good morning, dear participants. Good morning. So uh, I welcome you all to today's session. Like uh, we are going to discuss about the leadership skills for teachers. I hope everybody here is a teacher in the audience. Please respond, uh, respond in the comment box so that I'll be able to understand. How many of you are here from teaching profession? Say yes in the comment box. Okay, one yes. So can I assume that all of us are teachers? Now tell me, I have one more question. So we have been teaching for many years and uh, I think we have lost patience for listening. So kindly cooperate for one hour. So I would like to put forth a few points. Now my other question is, like why did you take up teaching? Is it out of your passion? Like is it out of your choice or by chance? So why did you become a teacher? Or how? How did you become a teacher? Is it by chance or by choice? Chance or choice? My dear participants. Out of choice, Gopal Nath Swati Madam, it's a passion and my choice. What about the rest of the participants? Kindly give me your response so that I'll understand the targeted group by choice. Is everybody here out of choice or by chance? So can I assume that none of us are here by chance? So everybody is here out of their choice. So for how long have you been teaching? Just tell me like below five years or below 10 years, about 10 to 15 years. So that I'll have an idea, 13 years, good, Swati Madam. Seven years, okay. 16, great. Please do tell me like how many years you have been teaching for. I see a lot of participants here, kindly respond. For how many years you have been teaching? So what I understood is most of us are here by choice. 
And also let me know like how many years you have been teaching. I, I just got two to three responses. 23 years, oh my God. Other participants, kindly give me a response. We'll start the session in a few minutes. Fifteen years, Sujata Madam. Okay, my last question. Four years. Go good. I have so many years to go. So one question is. Who is your favorite teacher? And what is the best quality you like in him or her? Only the name or only the quality? Just give me the name and one single quality in a teacher that you admire. Good morning, Rupa ma'am. Kindly uh, leave answers to my questions. You have been teaching for so many years. You are a teacher. So who is your favorite teacher? and one quality that you remember? Because it has something to, something to do with our session today. Kindly let me know your favorite teacher's name. I didn't see even one, two names also. Why? No favorite teachers? Swati ma'am, thanks for the answer, but I just need the quality, what you like in him or her. Practical demos, Ravichandran sir, okay. I would like to see more answers for this question before I share the video. Kindly leave the name of your favorite teacher and the quality you like in her or him. Please. So just the ma'am kindly mention the quality. Why do you like a person? Like their personality traits or one attribute? Very helpful, okay. Uma Devi ma'am, science teacher, my favorite. Rupa Chintala, Good. Other teachers, please kindly give me the name of your favorite teacher along with the best quality. I'm trying to share the screen, but before that, leave the answers. Mother's care I had with my teacher. So best, best person and very helpful for everyone with so many qualities. Right. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, ma'am, it is visible, ma'am. Yes. So I have seen the names of few teachers who made a remarkable, what should we say, like a remarkable presence in your life. You have been teaching for so many years, but still you remember your teacher, but only why? Only one teacher among so many teachers you have seen right from your LKG till your doctorate. You have seen so many teachers in your life, so many taught you so many things, but you remember only one, two, or you like only one or two teachers. Why? So is the screen visible to all of you? At least somebody uh, unmute and answer. Yes, ma'am, it is visible, ma'am. Yeah, okay, thank you. So why you remember only one or two teacher names is 
they are the leaders in your life they became the leader how which personality trait made them a leader so that you'll be able to understand by the end of the session thank you all for joining so i asked you this question already are you a teacher by chance or by choice so most of you said it is by choice maybe you are passionate towards teaching or you'd like to nurture students so whatever might be the reason you are in this field of teaching i should say this is the best profession so this is what earlier teaching used to be like like teachers were told what when and how to teach so they were required to educate every student in exactly the same way and they were not responsible when many failed to learn they were expected to teach using the same methods as past generations and any deviation from the traditional practices was discouraged by the supervisors so this happens even in most of the private schools even now so what happened was simply many teachers stood in front of the class and delivered the same lessons year after year and they became old and they didn't have any other chance to do what they like in the classroom for creating interest among the students so we live in the era of changing conditions and rising expectations aren't we yes we are living there are so many changes happening around us the way of teaching is changing students are changing so everything around us is changing so many teachers today are encouraged to adapt and adopt new practices that acknowledge both the art and science of learning so teaching is an art they understand that the essence of education is a close relationship between a knowledgeable caring adult and a secure motivated child i know most of you like most of us we we were loaded with lots of administrative work do you agree with that do you really get time to do the research or practice innovative teaching methods how many of you agree that the teacher's job became more like an administrative job i think most of us should be uh, thinking of the same so what a teacher should do is is a knowledgeable caring adult who is going to nurture and secure a motivated child the grasp that their most important role is to get to know each student as an individual so apart from delivering the lecture or teaching the lessons in the school we should have this personal rapport with the students every student is different their needs are different their learning styles are unique their cultural backgrounds are different right and the abilities also vary from a child to other child so we have to play this role of being different to different students we have to understand the unique needs the learning styles their capabilities their interest and we have to pay that personal attention if you really want to become a leader just like you remember the teachers when i asked you the question now and if you want to get the position in the child's life you want to play a significant role in nurturing them you should not be the same to everybody and apart from the classroom uh, delivering the lectures and finishing the syllabus you should also know the needs of every single student it may not be possible in a day and also the classrooms these days are they are crowded with so many students when this personal attention is not practically possible right in olden days not uh, the sessions like the sections were not crowded with so many students 
the teacher used to get time for one on one interaction they used to know about the person the family i mean the student the family background so that the counseling of that child was personally possible but now the student has the student number has increased the faculty is loaded with lots of administrative work this work that work they don't get time to spend with the student so we have seen how the teaching scenario is and now let us look at leadership again i'll ask a question here are leaders born or made are leaders born or made what do you think are leaders born answers i'm waiting for answers our leaders yes 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 i'm waiting for the answers they are born at this please respond what do you think if leaders are born there is no point in discussing today about the leadership skills that a teacher should possess my dear teachers please give your opinion on whether teacher sorry whether leaders are born or made sorry the hello on hello 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 not clear but uh, i think teachers are made sorry leaders are made not born so most of us assume that uh, leaders are born but this is not true of course we inherit some great skills from our birth but leaders are made so leadership is a skill that can be developed and enhanced so this session is an effort in understanding the significance of having leadership skills in a teaching profession so that we will be able to enhance it by putting in practice in our classrooms so that all of us can try to become a good leader teacher right so leadership is both as a research area and as a practical skill it encompasses the ability of an individual group or organization to lead influence or guide other individuals teams or the entire organization so till now we have been discussing only like one side of the coin becoming a leader to the students or a teacher leader to the students but once you start inculcating the qualities of a leader you will become a mentor to the other teachers your colleagues as a result you will be able to bring out the best results as an organization you will help your organization to grow so one side is you are benefiting the students and other side is once you develop this leadership ability is in you once you put it into practice it is indirectly benefiting the complete organization the whole organization itself right so why is leadership skill important for a teacher why is it important for all of us so teacher determines student success within the classroom and the research supports the notion that the teacher is a single greatest factor 
that determines the student's growth in the classroom. So effective teachers need to be leaders for their students. If you're good at delivering your lecture, that will make you a good teacher. But if you want to become a good leader, you have to have something else. What are the things that you should possess? So uh, I don't know how many, most of you will contradict with what I say now. Earlier, the source of uh, knowledge or information is only from the teachers, but now we have so many other sources. Like students can learn from Google, they can get information from YouTube and other teaching learning apps, right? The information is available everywhere. But what the apps do and what a teacher does is completely different. Teacher will personally understand the requirements of a person, of a student, and will try to teach him accordingly. Where an app is doing it the same level to all the students, irrespective of their learning abilities. So effective teachers need to be the leaders for the students. That is the reason why we have to learn the leadership skills. So it is critically important that teachers possess leadership skills because it is a fundamental factor that is required to enhance the instructional quality of teachers, both inside and outside the classroom. So by developing these skills, you'll be able to become a good leader, teacher to the students. And by becoming a leader outside the classroom, that is nothing but to your colleagues and all, you'll be able to develop the organization. So who are these teacher leaders? Yes, there is a term called teacher leader. And who are they? They are the educators who use their expertise to improve student learning by working inside and outside the classroom in formal and informal ways to augment the professional skills of colleagues, to strengthen the culture of the school and improve the quality of instruction. This is what I was talking about when we were discussing in the previous slide. So one side of the coin is you're helping the student. The other side is by becoming a leader, you're helping your organization. You're completely changing the culture in which the school is, school or college is. Right. So what type of leader is a teacher? We have so many leaders outside in the society. But what about a teacher? Teachers are leaders all day. They lead by example in the way they act, they speak, and they behave. So all of us are in the teaching profession, and all of us know that the students try to imitate us. They try to imitate how we speak, how we behave, how we walk, or our mannerisms and all for fun. But not just doing this, they also try to practice it in their real life, the way we speak, the way we behave with them. So we have to be conscious all the day. You should be an example to them. We have to be the leaders all day. You can't take it for granted, OK, now. Nobody is watching me, I can relax. But as long as you are a teacher, you have to be the leader all the day. The, the teachers they lead their students through challenging activities and rigorous learning. Then they take on additional teacher leadership roles inside and outside the classroom. So apart from the regular learning or teaching activities, we have to take up these additional roles. So how can you become a leader that we'll see in the next coming slides. I asked you in the beginning of the session, who is your favorite teacher? And I asked you for one single quality which you like in him or her. Some of you told me it is a caring nature. Some of you told it is that they give practical examples. Sorry, I don't remember the names. So practical demonstrations and all. So these are the qualities demonstrated by teacher leaders. Integrity, commitment, 
strong communication skills, expertise, courage, focus. Yes, generosity also. Initiative, passion, positive attitude, problem solving abilities, responsibility, and all of this. And these were identified by Maxwell in the year 1999. But even before that, many teachers were practicing all of them. Yes, along with this, a little bit of care and empathy towards students also will make you a, a leader teacher or a teacher leader. So these were the qualities demonstrated by teacher leaders. So we can check what qualities do we have. So we are already a teacher leader by this time. Coming to what is this teacher leadership? It is a process. So teacher leaders are the professionals who carry through with this process to lead change in their schools for the benefit of students. Teacher leaders step outside the classroom doors and accept the challenges to improve their practice through working with the colleagues, school administration, and professional staff, as well as students and families. We know there are uh, so many leadership styles. So if you are any of management uh, faculty, you'll be knowing all these leadership styles. So here are few leadership styles of a teacher, which is going to make you a teacher leader. So there are many ways educators can lead. Yes, all of us are teachers. And no two teachers will share the same leadership style. Now, carefully, after this, uh, types of leadership styles, please comment and let me know which kind of leader you are. Here are five leadership styles that teacher leaders can use inside and outside the classroom. So most of us, even from olden days, the teacher is following only this authoritative leadership style. But there are other styles too. We'll have a look at them. So as I already said, no two teachers will share the same leadership style. So let us have a look at what are the five leadership styles that teacher leaders follow, not simply teachers. So we are trying to combine the leadership styles with the teaching so that we'll get this five kinds of leadership styles. First one is authoritative. As all of us know, the name itself signifies Authoritative leaders are those who push their teams to pursue common goals. They balance maintaining a high bar and inspiring their teams to success. So they are mostly authoritative. In education sector, this means authoritative leaders are, or maybe are, the teachers with many years of experience or higher degrees. So they push their teams to pursue the common goals. So the goals were set by the leader itself. And he'll ask them to achieve those goals. That is authoritative leadership. See, this is not just for the students, even to the colleagues. Maybe being a HOD or a principal, there also this is applicable. So authoritative leaders are those who push their teams to pursue common goals. And this is a mostly seen type of leadership style in our schools and colleges. They agree with this? They agree with this? Simply your HOD sir or the principal sir, they'll set the goal and they'll ask you to go get it. Yes, all of us are facing the same, right? So other kind of leadership style is affiliative leadership. These leaders are people who their teams can trust and feel safe going to. So the teams strongly believe in this kind of leaders and they feel safe going to. So this kind of teachers are those whom the students trust. If they have some problem at, at their home, 
or in the classroom, we can go only to one teacher. We can't go to the staff room and tell us tell them our problems, right? We all have the comfort zone or cushioning. We are only one teacher. That particular teacher is said to be possessing this kind of leadership style that is affiliative leadership. They validate their colleagues and build mutual trust among the teams. The qualities that promote inclusivity, equity, and culturally responsive people. So these teachers are whom we can trust. We feel safe even sharing our personal problems as a student. As a student, a student is also comfortable sharing it with you and sometimes even colleagues. So we have seen two types till now. One is authoritative, where they decide the goals, they'll push you, and they'll force you to go and get the goals, achieve them. So affiliative is when we feel they are affiliated to us, we feel comfortable, we go to them, we seek their help, we trust them a lot. That is affiliative leadership. Next one is democratic leadership. We know the name itself tells like they seek our opinion, they take our feedback, they share our responsibilities, right? So democratic leaders are the first to seek feedback and share decision-making responsibilities. So when your HOD or your team lead is making some decisions, when they seek your opinion, then they fall into this category of democratic leadership. In education, this is often means gathering feedback from students, staff, administrators, and families to implement school-wide changes and policies. All of us have this feedback system, right? We have this culture of taking feedback from students. We have certain processes also. Based on your feedback, you'll be getting some scores. Maybe your increments are based on that. But how many of us really look at every single point which is given by the student? Even students these days are like that. They're not looking and reading every single point before giving the feedback. They're just marking the same point to all the questions. They don't have patience even to go through the questions in the feedback form. Right, even in the place where I work, I have seen students doing that. That kind of feedback will not really help. But a constructive feedback will help us to develop as leaders, right? So that kind of uh, falls into democratic leadership style. So democratic leaders are the first to seek feedback. They ask for feedback and share decision-making responsibilities. Do we make or do we share this decision-making responsibilities in the classroom? Okay, your HOD is behaving like that with you. He is taking the decisions and asking you to follow. But in a classroom, you are the teacher, you are the leader. When you are making certain decisions regarding maybe some assignments or some work to be done by the students, are we taking their opinion? So I give them lots of assignments and I'll ask them to submit within a week then I'm being an authoritative leader. If I ask them if it is okay for them to submit within a week, then I become a democratic leader. They might be having a long weekend in between, so they may not be able to submit on time. So they have exams in other subjects or whatever might be the reason if I ask their opinion before finalizing the assignment due date, then I come into this category of democratic leadership. These are small, small things, but they make a lot of difference. So in education, this often means gathering feedback from students. So as a democratic leader, you should have this habit of taking feedback from students. Even if, they, if their feedback is not according to your expectations, you should be ready to accept that. Only then we can change. I hope you get what I'm trying to tell you is whatever might be the feedback, just accept it and check if it is right or not. 
even if it is not right it's okay that is what they have understood you should leave it and i have seen some students i have seen some teachers who shouted at students for giving less feedback so this all happens so democratic leadership is you are ready to share the decision making responsibilities and we're coming to the next one pace setting leadership style pace setting leaders essentially focus on the practice of leading by example inside or outside the classroom they do it all setting the tone of a school and inspiring other teachers by their skills dedication and achievements so we have one among our colleagues whom we admire but we don't admit do we have anybody we admire them but we don't admit it in the public there are certain colleagues so those are pace setting leaders they focus on the practice of leading by example inside and outside the classroom for the students and also for the colleagues so they are, they stand as an inspiration to all of us with their skills dedication and achievements the last one is coaching leadership this is what we need to do like we need to identify the struggling students or teachers maybe the young teachers who have joined or the students who are struggling due to their personal issues or family issues or some learning issues you should be the coach the mentor in their lives usually what many teachers do is they ignore these people they only teach to the brilliant and the cream section of the class like cream layer of the class those are really interested in the subject but there are many people who are left unattended because they are scoring low because they don't pay attention to the class so we should focus on that 5 to 10 percent in the class and try to be their mentor so that kind of leadership is coaching leadership now if you are okay with all of this kindly tell me what kind of leader or leadership style you fall into what of all the five we have discussed now if you are free kindly share like which category you fall into one authoritative two is affiliative third is democratic fourth is pace setting and fifth is coaching i don't see anybody responding i'm waiting yes what kind of leader are you you fall into none of this <laughs> none of the above i gave you option of 1 2 3 4 5 5 yes thank you sujatha ma'am i received an answer democratic she is a democratic kind of teacher leader democratic and coaching swati ma'am devara physics sir democratic good good to see Two other, two more responses, please, so that we'll proceed. Even if it is none of the above, it is fine. Coaching, Ranjini, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Victor, sir, coaching and democratic, good. Face setting is also nice. Pace setting also can be practiced. Affiliate that we don't know because from students' point of view, we'll understand whether they are having that trust in us and they are approaching us or not. We can't declare ourselves like you. We fall into that category, right? Thank you. Moving ahead. Money gunam. democratic and according to situations the remaining we will implement ma'am thanks for your wonderful answers 
So how to develop leadership skills in teachers? I think uh, we are coming close to the end of the session. Yes, I got one more answer. Matsyangada Patil ma'am. Affiliative, authoritative, democratic, depending on the situation. This is nice. So in any school or college, any individual teacher can indeed become a leader in his or her own right. We are all teachers. We can become leaders in our own way. And the process of developing the right leadership skill will come by and through walking the talk. What is this walking the talk? Walk the talk, talk the walk. What is this walking the talk means? Yes. See, this entire world will celebrate those who are sincere in doing what they preach to others. Usually what we generally, generally human tendency is we talk a lot, we give lectures, if we don't put at least 1% of that into practice. This is human tendency, of course. We talk a lot about a lot of things, maybe bribery, that, this, we talk so many things, but when putting them into practice, we usually don't because that requires lots of uh, efforts. So walking the talk kind of people are those who put them into practice. Even if it is tiresome, it takes lots of efforts. They consistently do what they talk. See, all of us know, all of us know this um, Dr. Kurian. He's a well-known leader of National Dairy Development Board. And we all know him like he's the father of white revolution, right? So he innovated this concept of rural education to cater the needs of Indian rural sector. And he established an institution called as Institute of Rural Management in Gujarat. So they offer so many courses related to this agro-based industries and research institutes on agriculture. And now, you know, this uh, university, it has got international recognition. The university, sorry, the Institute of Rural Management, which is located in Anand in Gujarat. So, so this is like an example for walking the talk. Every teacher, irrespective of where or what he teaches. So we are all in different places. We teach different courses. Whatever we teach, we can become a leader by getting inspired of such people. So I would like to put forth this example of Dr. Kurian, who is the father of or the pioneer of white revolution. So he wanted to cater to the needs of uh, rural India. So he established this Institute of uh, Rural Management in Gujarat. So he, he identified there is a need. He was able to put it into practice. And that resulted in this great university or great institute for rural management, and which now has got this international recognition. So here's an example. There are so many examples for walking the talk. And whatever you see, whatever you say, whatever you talk about this, you should be able to come up with a solution to that. That is nothing but walking the talk. So every teacher, irrespective of where or what we teach, we can become a leader by getting inspired by such people like Dr. Kurian. That is the first point through which you can become a good teacher leader. Second one is keeping away from school or college politics. I know it is hard to accept, but where people are, there we find politics. Why do we find this politics in our schools and colleges? Why? Why, Why do we find 
politics in schools and colleges. What my understanding towards this is, when people are selfish, when selfishness envelops a person's mind, they start doing this politics. See, politics is nothing but uh, if you're looking out for promotion, like you're an assistant professor and you want associate professor, and there are so many other colleagues having all the requirements to become an associate, but your college or your university is offering that associate promotion only to one person whom you think is not capable of, then some politics would have happened. Politics, you know this, right? This is not a new term. We find this everywhere, where the set of people are there, their politics happen. See, this is out of complete selfishness. When there are other people also who are more capable than you and you want to get that position, you'll try to get it by all means. You'll try to approach or get some political reference or bribe them or whatever you do. So keeping ever from school and college politics is the best way. If you want to become a leader, you don't get into that. You know this, right? Shape up or ship out. Shape up is trying to make it good. Like you want to uh, change their mindset. You want them to be in a right path. You want them to be good. That is shaping up. When it can't do that, ship out. Ship out is to remove from that place. So if you are unable to do both of them, shaping up or ship out, you just keep quiet or keep away yourself from the school or college politics. I know like everybody here is having an experience of mostly above five years. You might have experienced something like this politics in your work zone. Certainly you will. And the third point is enveloping this collective consciousness of all the students. So can we be the Shah Rukh Khan of Check the India in real life? Can we be the Shah Rukh Khan of Check the India in our real life? Why? Why not? What did he do in this movie called Check the India? I think most of you have watched. In that movie, all the players. They were diverted, they don't have a common goal, they were politics running. They are not ready to work as a team, they're not happy with each other. So it was not a collective team. So what this Shah Rukh Khan did was, he tried to identify their problems, their distractions, he tried to guide them, and collectively they were able to win the cup, right? So. These days, even students have a lot of distractions from electronic media and social media. I think everybody will agree with this. So the teachers, what, as a teacher, what we should do is we should develop this rapport with each student to the extent possible and develop the focus that is very much needed. So most of the time, the students spend with us active time they spend in the schools and colleges. And I would say we know them better than their parents. Because parents, so both of them are working, they don't get time to take care of their children. And these uh, students don't get time, like quality time to spend with their parents. They have so many distractions, as I already mentioned, electronic media and social media. So we should take time, we should put that special effort and try to change the focus of students. The teacher should, collectiveness should be increased among all the students. We should try to make them as a team and work together so that they'll achieve certain things 
when they collectively participate in some events like uh, suppose you are, your uh, city's lions club is organizing some blood donation camp you can ask your students to participate or encourage students and encourage the citizens to take part or do some voluntary work so if you put some efforts and develop uh, the students as a team and make them work they'll enjoy the beauty of working together they'll know and understand there are certain other things which give them happiness apart from the social media and electronic media they'll also try to understand the beauty of teamwork as a result you will be able to develop this collective consciousness among the students yes the next one is making efforts to tap individual talents and resources every individual is talented in one way or the other right so we have heard the stories of dedicated teachers of remote villages government schools even very recently i have seen a teacher who donated like 25 lakhs of his uh, retirement fund to girl child for their education and all this is this may not be possible with everybody but at least we can do a little small things we have like heard of many stories like that see i am not telling you what is which had not happened at least a teacher if he can give some part of his salary not it is not possible with everybody i am telling to whom it is possible if they would have uh, donated a part of their salary to get the basic resources to the school especially the remote government schools after seeing this what will happen you know the local community will rise to the occasion they might collect some funds the local community local people and sometimes even if this information reaches to the old students they might even contribute to the betterment of the school in which they studied so this is not just a wishful thinking but there are many press reports which talk about this these are the dramatic changes that are happening so this all started with a small effort of a teacher that is what this fourth point speaks about making efforts to tap individual talents and resources and the last one is making continuous efforts to develop further through feedback as we discussed already in the previous slides taking feedback will help us develop by institutionalizing a climate of openness yes we are open for feedback we should be ready for that the leader can get useful feedback and correct whatever weakness is pointed out so that it can be corrected so we should be open our continuous effort is for the development if we want to develop we should be open for feedback so this is an extremely important step in leadership process so every teacher here knows all of these things but what we should do is walking the talk we are talking a lot of things here if you if you can put into practice we can become a teacher leader leadership is basically an influence process if you are able to influence a small group of people or even a hundred people through this his or her honesty or integrity vision action plan then what will this emerge into that will automatically help you to emerge as a leader such leaders are always too good in their words and deeds so here is a video uh how many of you are interested to watch this i think it will take 5 minutes No issues, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So here is a video about a class of rowdies. It was mentioned rowdies because you can see them in the short film. It is just for five minutes. How a teacher was working to transform the students. Yeah, I'll play it for you and. Uh, Thank you. 
taking all your science subjects, so let's start off on a good note. <laughs> Not that no, thank you. So let's start with a nice round of introductions. My name is Sakshi and I love working with young people. Ma'am, ma my name is Anish. I was a top of last year. Ma'am, my ID is 145 and I've got double promotion one. <laughs> My name, my is, name Andy. is Andy. I like dancing. Like my name is Jason and I like to play with guitar. Okay, everyone's done except the last one number. Uh, Zara? Where is Zara? Zara, let us go. Tell a million stories, some of yours and a few of mine.
class of Lauti has really changed. How did you manage it? I haven't done anything. I just created a space where no one is judging me, where they can learn through their own interests. So everyone is done with their session except Zara. Zara, come on. Every rowdy class has a voice, waiting to be heard, wanting to be understood, wishing to be loved. Thank you, ma'am, for listening to us. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for finding the reason for our rowdiness, for giving a channel to our craziness. Thank you, ma'am, for finding the poet in a zombie, and for setting me free. For letting me be, no matter where we go and what we do, we always carry in our hearts a part of you, dear ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. The session is open for discussion now. We can post your questions in the chat box or you can unmute and directly interact with the resource person. Thank you. Any questions, you can post it in the chat box also. Uh, thank you, ma'am. No questions from our side. Shall we wind up, ma'am? Any more questions? Okay, ma'am. We shall end the session now. Shall we wind up, ma'am? Yeah, ma'am. On behalf of IOT Academy, I thank Professor Leela Vati, ma'am, for the detailed and informative session. And thanks for the nice and beneficial presentation, ma'am. And it was an amazing video. And thanks for that amazing video also, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I thank all the participants who are joining this session today. Kindly fill the uh, feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
kindly submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all.